Scientists discover that mammals can breathe through their butts. A Carnival cruise ship smashed into an iceberg. And why is Gen Z buying flip phones? These are the weird stories for Tuesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast. I'm so glad you joined me. I'm your host, Jonesy, and you are you, and you are special. Scientists have discovered that mammals can breathe through their butts. It's the sound of science. Boop, 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 science. Amazing. Mammals can breathe through their butts. So what you're saying is I can breathe through my butt? Oh, I feel like a miracle after hearing this. The article begins with a, with a funny pun right up top. It says, they're a major asset to science. A team of Japanese scientists who discovered that mammals can breathe through their butts. This research team is led by Ryo Okabe and Takanore Takebe. They took home the so-called IG Nobel Prize in Physiology for revealing that animals such as mice, rats, and pigs can absorb oxygen into their bloodstream via their rectums. They can breathe through their rectum areas. Oh, I was so excited. I thought humans could also breathe through our rectums. It doesn't sound like that's the case. Um, Don't worry, guys. We can still get drunk through our butts. Just ask the Mormons. The Mormons be butt-chugging for Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Now, it's very important to note that the IG Nobel Prize isn't like the big giant Nobel Prize that the that the scientists long for. They try and build their career on such things, such accolades. No, this is a quirky annual ceremony where scientists win awards for achievements that, quote, first make people laugh and then make people think. Hence a butt study. Um, that makes me feel better because I was I, I couldn't help but wonder why scientists were studying buttholes so closely <laughs> with a big butthole budget. I'm sure that they had. You guys are really studying buttholes over there. What's going on? It's it's for science. We swear. We swear to God it's for science. It's definitely science that we're studying the butts. You know, as you know, on Weird AF News, I've covered many stories about scientists wasting budgets studying very stupid things. This sounds kind of helpful, learning that mammals can breathe through their butts. I'm sure it's useful. You know, in case you were wondering, you know, maybe we've been hitting the bong incorrectly this entire time. You know, maybe there's a whole new way to snorkel when we go to Jamaica. <laughs> they do say this is helpful for humans. Let's let's learn why. It says the rump centric research potentially offers a new way to help critically ill human patients breathe when ventilators or artificial lung supplies aren't readily available, such as when hospitals were slammed during COVID. The so-called eternal, e- internal ventilation offers a new paradigm to help patients suffering from respiratory failure. So yeah, helpful for humans, it seems. I like that. I like us when science is helpful to us and also uh, funny. Now it says here some of the other wacky and creative scientific studies and discoveries that were honored at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge focused on everything from strange plant behavior to drunk worms. Oh, so they got some worms drunk to see what happened. <laughs> I want to participate in one of these quirky studies, man. And now for the next presentation, giraffes watching pornography. <laughs> Let's see what happens. The article mentions specifically a French Chilean research team which won the Anatomy Prize for their work studying whether hair swirls in the same direction on the heads of people in the Northern Hemisphere versus the Southern Hemisphere. And it says here, someone at the University of Florida did an investigation into the swimming abilities of a dead trout, uh, which apparently won the Physics Prize. So, dead trout can swim? A, well, you know, we're learning. Now, in addition to this hilarious research, the winners took home funny prizes as well, ranging from a fake $10 trillion bill to a spoof transparent box full of items related to Murphy's Law. Although the tongue-in-cheek award ceremony isn't officially affiliated with the actual Nobel Prize, winners were presented with awards by actual Nobel laureates. So this was all really fun. I'd, I'd love to attend... Uh, a ceremony like this, the IG Nobel Prize. And I'm wondering if it takes place every year in 
in my home state of Massachusetts. But yeah, something weird and quirky in the world of science. I love it. A carnival cruise ship smashed into an iceberg. A Carnival Cruise Line ship collided with a very large piece of floating ice while traveling in the Tracy Arm Fjord in Alaska recently. Fjord, F-J-O-R-D. I think I pronounced that correctly. Why would you put a J after an F? I don't know. Maybe they hate me. Okay, let's get the details here and see if there was any survivors. What happened? What went down? Cassandra was a passenger on the ship that struck the iceberg. The ship is called the Carnival Spirit and recorded. she recorded the moment it struck the piece of ice. She told the media that she was standing on her balcony when she noticed they were getting pretty close. She said, quote, If we die, I thought it was damn well worth it. It's a titanic moment. Wow. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out they paid extra for this, uh, what's, what could be called an immersive titanic experience. <laughs> I mean, can you see that? People are so obsessed with the titanic, you could sell such a trip. It's a six-day cruise that ends with, uh, you know, just... Smashing into an iceberg. And and everyone gets a wooden door to hold on to just in case, just in case. Now, in a statement to the news, Carnival Cruise said the ship struck, quote, an errant piece of drifting ice while sailing in the Tracy Arm Fjord, Alaska. And they added that the vessel continued on its cruise and there has been no impact to operations. So it probably wasn't a huge piece of ice. Also, these ships are much bigger these days. Dare I say, unsinkable? <laughs> no, I, should, I probably shouldn't. All right, now the article says, although Cassandra, who uh, earlier got all excited about having her Titanic moment, making the comparison to the ship that sank after striking an iceberg in 1912, actually the ice that this cruise ship struck would not really be classified as an iceberg. Oh, I see, a bunch of clickbait here. It says iceberg in the title, guys. So sorry. This is clickbait here. It's just a, it was just an ice cube, it turns out. It dropped out of somebody's Mai Tai. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, an iceberg is a piece of ice with a height greater than 16 feet above sea level with a thickness of at least 98 feet and must cover an area of at least 5,382 square feet, they say. Just in case you're wondering what uh, technically is considered an iceberg, those are the dimensions. So, I mean, it seems as though some people are pretty disappointed that we're on that ship because they just they were hoping for a real iceberg because people are obsessed with the Titanic, as I mentioned earlier in the segment. I don't understand it myself. How many lives do we have to lose exploring this stupid thing? I mean, when is it going to end, man? The the obsession with this dumbass ship. (laughs) Like, I just can't understand it. Can someone explain this to me? Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So, Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed lower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Gen Z is now buying flip phones, also known as dumb phones, to limit their screen time. Our world is dominated by smartphones and constant connectivity. Yet a surprising trend is emerging. The return of the dumb phone. A growing number of adults and teenagers are trading in their sophisticated devices for simpler models, hoping to reclaim their time and their attention from the addictive pull of smartphone screens. This shift is not about a nostalgic nod to the past, but instead a conscious choice to address mounting concerns about mental health and digital addiction. What'd you guys think of that uh, up top introduction to the story? It's pretty, it was pretty, uh, I was trying to do that like alarmist announcer in those very serious, <laughs> those are very serious pieces that they do. Talking about how your teenagers are in danger. <laughs> And then there's now a growing concern over screen time. It says here, the decision to ditch the smartphones in favor of the flip phones 
stems from a collective realization that our relationship with technology is spiraling out of control. The average person, in case you don't know, spends hours each day on their smartphone, often without realizing it. And it's not just about wasted time mindlessly scrolling social media. It's what it does to our brains. Oh my goodness. And now I assume we're going to learn some scary things about what the smartphones are doing to our brains. Why stop there with the flip phones though? Let's just keep going back. Let's go back to landlines. Let's go back to rotary phones. What about those old timey phones on the wall that had no buttons? Remember those things? I mean, not that you remember those things. We weren't alive for those things, I don't think. But I've seen them in old movies. They don't even have any buttons to make a phone call. You just picked it up and you told somybody, hey, dial 44999. <laughs> and then the, someone would do that for you. Isn't that crazy? Let's bring back the carrier pigeon while we're at it. How about that? That'll keep us off the screens. No, instead we'll just be hanging out on rooftops waiting for the pigeon to come back, hoping it's still alive. All right, I'm going to get back into the article about the flip phones, which, by the way, nothing new. You, people have had flip phones ongoing even with the invention of the smartphones um, someone with a flip phone i usually assume is in the cartel doing cartel things with the flip phone <laughs> but uh you know you still see them the article says there's uh, some studies that suggest that the omnipresence of mobile devices may be contributing to some rising rates of anxiety depression and loneliness among teenagers and young adults a recent study by Harvard found that using social networking sites triggers the same part of the brain activated by addictive substances. The correlation between heavy social media use and negative mental health effects, particularly among children, is becoming increasingly clear to researchers. Oh, yeah, that's obvious to me. You know, the constant pull of notifications, the lure of social media validation, the pressure to curate an idealized version of oneself online creates a perfect storm for stressors. Some people would, would argue that, uh, you know, f just getting rid of the smartphone for the flip phone is dumb. They would say, you know, why can't you just put it down? Why can't you just shut it off? But this is a real addiction, man. You know, that little, that little bolt of uh, serotonin that you get, it's, you get like four or five likes on your post. I know how that feels. You know, I'm, I'm someone that's constantly posting on social media, putting my stand-up comedy clips up there, putting, you know, photos and whatnot regarding Weird AF News, looking for validation. I'm part of it. I'm part of it. And and sometimes you can't put the phone down. It's like any other addiction. You know, and if it's a real problem, you just gotta sometimes get go to something else. Having alcohol in the house, if you are an alcoholic, is an issue. Capiche? So I guess this is a form of just getting it out of the house here with the flip phone. Tough stuff, though, man, because it's just hard to navigate modern life with without a smartphone. You know, many of us need it for our jobs. Um, you know, for medical stuff too. Like you have to. I needed it to, when I went to a hospital, I had to access everything through an app when I was there. I just went to a baseball game. I couldn't have got in without the app, I, I don't think. I haven't seen like a paper ticket to a ball game and I don't know how long. Same with the concert. It's you, you need a smartphone to go to events, QR codes for menus at restaurants, although they will often have a, a paper version, but... It does make it difficult. The article says, The greatest concerns seem to be among Generation Z, the first generation to grow up entirely in the digital era. And according to one survey, about 46% of Gen Z take measures to limit their screen time these days. That's good. Some install specific apps that block social media use for the day after spending a specific amount of time. Um, we're also noticing a growing trend towards dropping smartphones altogether in favor of mobile tech that is from decades ago, like the flip phone. This article has an example of a 16-year-old named Luke from Canada who during an interview described how he traded his smartphone in for a basic model that only allows texts, calls, maps, and a few other limited tools. Um, now, it says this shift towards what are called dumb phones isn't just a personal experiment. It's becoming a broader social movement, in fact. Sales of these devices, some of which lack internet access entirely and apps, have been rising in North America. Stores such as Dumb Wireless in Los Angeles cater specifically to this new market, with many customers being parents who want their children to have a phone without the distractions of the internet. Yet adopting a dumb phone isn't without its challenges, it says. Schools and universities often require students to use certain apps and children can feel left out if their peers all have expensive smartphones. 
Some parents believe that it will take a community-wide effort to change the norm. But uh, companies are getting on board with this, so that helps. Companies such as HMD Global, which are the maker of Nokia phones, reported that U.S. sales of feature flip phones, traditional flip phones or slide phones, were actually up last year, with tens of thousands of units sold each month. And the resurgence of these dumb phones represents more than a technological downgrade. It's actually a cultural recalibration, they're saying. People are beginning to ask themselves, what kind of relationship do I want with my device? Do I want to be addicted to it? Do I want to control it or do I want it to control me? Now, uh, just FYI, you don't have to go the full limit of getting a, a flip phone if you want to take a little bit more control with your screen time and whatnot. Our current smartphones... They have, uh, you know, they have settings that you can go into to turn it into a very basic phone with minimal or no apps. There's app, there, and there's even apps to help you curb your device addiction. And um, there's ways in which you can limit your total screen time. You can put your phone in what's called dumb mode. You know, there's there's other options uh, rather than going out and getting a flip phone. And now it's like you're going to have to spend more money on a second phone plan. You know. So there's just ways around that. It's good to know because, you know, this is about reclaiming our lives from the grip of constant connectivity and, you know, the mental health struggles that can come along with that. I'm, I'm empathetic to that. And I, I myself, you know, at times suffer from a bit of that, I'd say. And you yourself might be suffering from this kind of addictive behavior. And if that's the case... You know, just know that you can make some changes and you can reclaim your time, reclaim your mind and get it out of the dominator technological culture. Let's rock. Hi, my friends and loyal listeners of the Weird AF News podcast. Thanks for spending some time with me in the show. Appreciate that. I want to thank everybody who sent me articles and emails. It's very, very nice. Appreciate it. My email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can always send me stuff there. Or um, on Instagram, at funnyjones. You can slide into my DMs. I welcome it. I got a review on Amazon. Let's read it. It's not good. But I read the bad ones, too. I got one star from someone with the initials KLWS. The title is, eh, one star, another one star. Uh, They wrote... The host's comments are irritating for morning listening. And that was it. They didn't even put a period at the end of listening. I mean, really bad grammar here. Anyways, you know, you gotta be, you got you get the bad ones and the good ones, guys. So apparently this individual found my comments irritating. They just wanted the weird news and I just don't you know, that's not what we do here. We don't I mean you can you can read weird news yourself. You can get weird news, you know, you can just do that yourself. That's not why would I just do that when you can do that yourself? Anyways, if you guys would like to help me out and write me a nice review uh, to offset this one-star review on Amazon, please just go to Amazon. You got an Amazon account. Just do a search for Weird AF News. It comes up. You can leave me a leave me like three stars would be super helpful. I'd appreciate that. You can also leave reviews on iTunes, also known as Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on Spotify, you can give me some stars just by that. Only takes a second. No need to write anything on that one. I don't even think you can. You could just give five stars. Boom. Make sure you subscribe to the show. And if you want to support, go to my website, weirdafnews.com, where you can join the Patreon or buy me a coffee. All right. You be good now. Uh, bye bye.